Alright, so for a while now, I've been wanting slash meaning to... My, my plan is to make a YouTube video for each of Denny's albums, just talking about each of his solo albums to hopefully convince people to listen to them. Um, and I, my intention was to go in order of release date, but today I was feeling inspired. I was listening to Wings on My Feet, so obviously not his first album, it's his sixth solo album, but um, I figured we'll just start there because I wanted to do it. And yeah, this is just for fun. My uh, I'm just going to go through, I guess, my thoughts and opinions on Wings on My Feet, uh, a couple facts about it. Um, it was released in 1987 on President Records. I'm writing off my notes here. As I said, it's Denny's sixth solo album. Um, it combines a lot of different genres, in my opinion. Uh, it's very, I, I'd argue that it's a prog rock album, um, but it's very bluesy, of course. Um, there's like some jazz and funk, and there's a, actually a lot of electronica and space rock. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, and a bit of reggae, too. Um, yeah, it almost gives me, like, it's it's similar in sound. It, it reminds me of Styx. I don't really know why, because it's really not, I guess there's not that much in common, but I get the same, the same, like, vibe from it. So yeah, um, the personnel on the album. We have Denny Lane, of course, on guitar and lead vocals. Um, there's Rick, Rick Wakeman from Yes plays keyboards on this album, so that makes it pretty great also. Um, Chris Slade of ACDC is on drums. Um, he also played with Denny in his, on his 1982 album, Anyone Can Fly. So I guess they worked together again. I think he's a good drummer. I like his work. Um, there's Earl Lewis on bass. Tracy Ackerman sings va backing vocals. Um, just a note is that she also sings lead vocal on the song Ice from Rick Wakeman's album time machine which came out in 1988 so a year after this one um and then there's also jackie raw who i couldn't find much information on on backing vocals as well so it's denny singing with two female backing vocals which is it works um production notes i have here that it was produced by denny lane um so he produced it it's very synthy as i was saying before and i think it's it's what I call high 80s. It's just a very, a very 80s album. There's no denying that, but it's fun. Um, but yeah, it's very similar to Denny Lane's previous album, Hometown Girls, which he also produced. It's just very 80s. <laughs> yeah, and it was engineered by Ray Hedges and Sean Lynch. So there's 12 tracks on the album. None of them are really too long. The longest ones are just over four minutes, so it's not like a prog album in the sense that it's long, endless tracks, but just the sound. It's, it's it's interesting. I don't know. Maybe there's a word for it. I just don't know. But I find it to be unusual compared to other things that I've listened to. Um, but it's, yeah, just very 80s. So the album opens with the song Wings on My Feet, title track. Um, just check the album because it's the title track. I don't know. And um, it's just a song about having wings on your feet in the sense that you can't stay in one place, you know, it's that he's singing about himself or he wants to keep traveling and um, the line, I was born with wings on my feet, he's, it's a love song basically saying, sorry, I have to go, I need to travel. So yeah, I like it, it's fun. Um, I noted that I really like the backup singers on this. It's a solid rock song. It sounds to me like a hit. I'd say Denny Lane fans know that he definitely can write a hit and it to me, it sounds like a radio hit. Um, very fast-paced. It doesn't have any slower moments or moments of dullness where it's just like, get back to the song. It's just kind of fast-paced throughout. I really like Denny Lane's vocal on this album. I think it's really solid and a bold opening to the album. And I noted that it's got some funky bass and synth solo. And I noted that the closing line, it, I think, sounds cool. So, yeah, I just, I like that song a lot. That's one of it comes on shuffle. I'm listening to it. No, no questions asked. The next track on the album, track two, is called Kick the Ball. Uh, this is where the album goes from pop to blues. And, yeah, it's a slower song, kind of. I mean, they're all funky. It's got that. A lot of bass. It, but it starts with a fanfare of Screaming Girls just for a couple seconds and clapping. And then it um, just, yeah, just blues, bass. Um, 
I noted that I like the harmonies throughout this song. Um, I'd say Denny's vocals kind of raspy in the song is the best way I can describe it, but I think it gives the song like an interesting edge. It's, you know, it's typical screaming sound. I think it's cool. A uh, lot of vocal range, I noted. Next song is Portrait, which is a slower, more emotional song about like, looking back on passage of time and old memories and stuff. It's about uh, John Bonham. The lyrics are like a portrait of an old friend who has gone, memories linger on, the old days were the good days, so they say life's worth every penny that you pay. It's just like a kind of a just a sad, nostalgic song. Um, I like it for what it's about, but it's not necessarily one I listen to all the time. Um, though I've seen Denny play it live, and it's actually pretty cool live, so yeah. After that, it goes into Castle in the Air, which I always mix up with the Don McLean song, but regardless. Um, Castle in the Air. It is track four on the album. Uh, it's very heavy drum synthesizer, basses, and Demi just screaming. Um, to me, it's kind of an, it just has an unnerving sound to it. Um, if you think of like Paul McCartney's Temporary Secretary, it's just kind of like dissonant and makes me feel a little uneasy, but I imagine that's what it's going for. And it like, it moves in and out of dissonant sounds. It's, it's, it's unusual. Um, it's not one I listen to typically on its own, but I, I do think it, it's, I mean, it fits on the album. Absolutely. Just kind of a weird, but like weird in a good way, like a proggy song, I guess. Um, after that, it goes into Roll the Dice, which I love the keyboard intro at the beginning. Rick, Rick Wakeman, just, it's great. Um, I think this is, I noted that this is a great vocal in all caps. Uh, this is one of my all time favorite Denny Lane vocals. I think he sings this one very well. Um, it's just a song about, gambling pretty much the lyrics are got a hole in my pocket where the money falls through i don't give a damn about what money can do come on roll the dice cast away all your worry let yourself go it's, it's a very cynical song but it's very poppy um it sounds like a, um even more than wings on my feet like a radio hit to me it's 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 very catchy which i like i always like the contrast of cynical more lyrics more cynical lyrics and very poppy song, so it's fun. Um, it's one I listen to all the time again, along with the title track. Highly recommend that one if you're just wanting to listen to one. Go for go for Roll the Dice. After that, there is Lucy Lullaby, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is a lullaby for Denny's daughter Lucy, who was born in February of that year, 87. Um, the album, if you look on the back, it's actually the focus is it's dedicated to Lucy. It's probably backwards, but that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so where was I? It's the longest song on the album, and that is either a blessing or a curse. I, from, from what I've gathered, this song is either you like it or you hate it. Um, you got, you have to enjoy Denny Lane's voice in order to hear it, because that's just, the whole song is just a slow lullaby. There's not much else to it. It's pretty bare. Um, I love it. I think it's a great song. Uh, where was I? Yeah, it's it's just very sappy, um, but that, that's nice, you know. It's, it's, it, it is what it is. I think it's pretty unusual for Denny to sing a song like this. Um, just stands out as one of the few that he's done in that style. Um, but I think it shows the versatility of his singing ability, and I like it. Again, I would go for more like that. I also noted that it sounds like a hymn. There's lots of, you know, female backing vocal just going ooh in the background, and yeah, sounds like a church song. But at the end, after the song fades out, there's actually a fun little piano outro, so that's fun. It's a fun little outro to side one. So yeah, that is the end of side one. Side two of the album. You know what? While I have it here, let's take a break from that for a second. And I didn't even pull the album out. That... Is it on President Records? You are looking at side two right now, actually. There's side one. I have this record in like pristine condition. I don't know. It like when I got it, it just seemed like it had not been played very much. But it's it's just one of the most pristine sounding records I have. So yeah, I enjoyed that. But yeah, side two. Let's put that away later. Um, side two opens with a song called No Sleep, which is um 
side two, um, when that happens, it takes a turn into like the space rock and more synthesizers than side one, which is still a good amount of synthesizers. But um, yeah, it's a sharp turn of a lot of synth and slap bass. Um, it's not my favorite song I actually wrote here. Not my favorite song on the album, but once it's going, it's all right. You know, it's I like it once I'm listening to it, but it's the intro doesn't catch me and make me necessarily stop and not skip it on shuffle. But it's a good song. It's not. I don't think any of the songs on this album are duds or anything. They're all good. Just not my favorite. I noted that there's a very large keyboard solo, so I'd say Rick again. Rick Wakeman makes that. I, I like that a lot. Um, after that, we go into Teo Princess which has an interesting opening. It's an acapella opening song. Um, and then it's always just Denny as an acapella. And then the um, bass and drums and backing vocalists come in. And they're all just chanting, Tail Princess. It's kind of like a, it's an unusual song. It gets very funky again. It's singing about the strength of women. It starts with the line, we name our ships after the women we knew, like the Queen of the Nile and the Saucy Sioux. It's, it's kind of funny. It's like a... Just an appreciation of women's song. Makes me, I don't know. <laughs> I like it. It's just kind of ridiculous. And then um, the next one is It's Never Too Late, which honestly, it's not a bad song again. It's just one that doesn't, isn't remarkable to me in that if I go a long time without listening to this album, it's not one I could just hum without hearing it for a second and remembering how it goes. Um, lots of keyboard or it sounded like xylophone almost at the beginning, but I don't think it is. I really couldn't tell, to be honest. Um, interesting opening, though. I noticed in the first verse, Denny and the backing vocalist are singing in perfect unison. There's no harmony. I like it more once in the second verse they branch out into a harmony and it sounds cool. Um, yeah, it's a solid track. It's not too long. It's a pretty short one. It's only three minutes and 16 seconds. Then it goes into Caribbean Sun, which is exactly what it sounds like. Just a very reggae synth song. Um, I, I think it's reggae. Um, it's a... It, yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. You just have to listen to it and tell me, because I'm missing the word for it right now. Um, but, you know, classic. I wrote classic Denny yelling vocal and a driving bass line. But I enjoy it a lot. It's kind of... It's one that can either drag to me sometimes or um just sounds a little like like i've heard it before but i like it after that it goes into the fifth track on side two the 11th track on the album which is blushing bride i wrote kind of r b question mark it's a yeah more bass um there's a brush drum intro that i like it's kind of a i wrote soppy love song and i think it's rick Rick Wakeman really pulls it together. I can't say his name. But yeah, he, he definitely is the cohesion in that song. But it's a good song. Just gotta be in the mood for it. And then the last track on the album is my other favorite, which is called Space Train. It's pure space rock. Um, slap bass, crazy saxophone, or maybe it's a keyboard. I can't really tell. It's just kind of all wonder synthesizer sound, and it's shredding guitar. And it fades out at the end in a cool way, which I think really wraps up the album. But yeah, it's kind of hard to describe. It's just a bit of a crazy song. Um, it starts with blues, and at the end it's just full-blown space rock strangeness. I love it. Um, it's a, it's It references The Little Prince. I'm not sure if the whole song is... It's not about The Little Prince. It, it directly references The Little Prince, but it's not about it. Um, but I'd say it carries the same themes as the story of The Little Prince. Um, the lyric, did you read The Little Prince, how he came from outer space, how he had to learn to live in a strange place, like the man who fell to earth, falling from a higher plane. If he could, he would remain on the space train. It's just, it's a weird song, but like, it's, it's really good. Um, yeah, I think the vocals interesting and the way, just the way it's produced, it really blends in with the instruments. Great sound. And yeah, um, this is my go-to song if I'm trying to get a prog fan to like Denny Lane. Just Sherlin Space Train it has, hasn't failed me yet. But yeah, um, I'm not sure if... I know my opinion is overwhelmingly positive. I would rate this album easily at a 8.5 or 9 out of 10. It has a few moments that aren't the greatest, I guess, but they're certainly still enjoyable. 
Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite solo Denny Lane albums. I would definitely love to hear what other people think. I'm very open to discussion on that. So yeah, if you always, if you ever want to discuss it, let me know. All right. Thanks for watching. If you got through this somehow, take care. Bye.